Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. I am so excited to introduce you to someone very, very special to me. She is my podcast guest today, and her name is Sarah Paikai. Sarah is a multimedia spoken word artist. Yes, you got it right, a spoken word artist. And if you watched AGT last year, the winner of AGT in 2020 was a spoken word artist. And you know, I know I'm a little biased because Sarah's my friend, but I honestly think Sarah is even better than he was. And he was good. He was good, obviously. One AGT, a million dollars. But that's not all. She's also the COO of an eight-figure marketing company. She's an author of the number one Amazon best-selling book, Passion to Action, How You Can Do It All. As an Asian American artist, Sarah is passionate about creating art that challenges the status quo and redirects how viewers approach social, economic, political, and world events. I know Sarah because I had the privilege of being a member of a mastermind group with her, of getting to work with her. Um, as a member of this mastermind group where we traveled together, we uh, ate at really fancy restaurants and, and she got to see me um, go in pajamas, which isn't really <laughs> rare, but, <laughs> and, you know, in, I don't think I was naked in front of you. I don't think we did anything. No, naked, I don't think you so. never know. That's no, nice. we did swim That's in nice. the dark in pajamas. So in a pool, remember that one? That was That's like, so right. Oh yeah. <laughs> that counts. That counts. That counts. So welcome, Sarah. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. And I feel like it's almost long overdue. I know we've been trying to coordinate being able to have this conversation. And I think so many times we just get caught up talking as friends. And so I'm glad we can do this officially. This is great. I love it. And we're even matching in our colors. Yeah, we have matching colors and everything today. It's awesome. Um, and you know what? We were really close to not getting to meet today because my internet crashed at 2.30. Oh, and wow. And I didn't think I was going to... I'm like, it, I mean, it just literally just came back up before this. I was like, <laughs> oh no. So, so it was finally meant to be. Yes. I love it. So Sarah, I'm going to um, ask you a, a big question here and you can start right. wherever you want in, in your, in your life, but how did you dare to leap into yeah. this amazing life you have now? Yeah, that's such a good question. Oh my gosh, where to even start? Well, <laughs> um, <laughs> where to begin? I guess at the beginning. Yeah. No, um, okay, so cool. for a lot, a lot of my life, I was raised as a pretty typical, you know, Asian American. I'm hundred percent Japanese, but I'm five foot nine. So I'm really tall compared to uh, my parents and my relatives. Uh, my brother is taller than me. So the two of us were kind of like two peas in a pod. Um, and I always kind of felt my whole life that I didn't quite fit into the places that I was. And I didn't know what that meant. I thought for a really long time, there was maybe just something that was wrong with me because I was very not culturally correct, meaning like I was very loud and outspoken and I knew exactly what I wanted and I was bossy and I didn't go with the status quo. I was always kind of um, a rebel, if you will and a misfit. Mm. And for a long time, I internalized it like, oh, there's something wrong with me. I'm not doing the right thing. And I'm doing this wrong, or I'm a bad person. I just didn't really know how to categorize all of these desires that I had to take the leap. I, I always wanted to just jump into the next thing that was in front of me and, and go big or go home, right? Very extreme. And if you know anything about uh, Japanese American culture, especially I grew up in Hawaii. So especially in Hawaii, um, it's, I should have been a lot more reserved, a lot more quiet, a lot more um, compliant, you know, even 
um, who I married and how, and, and my boisterous, loud opinionated self. It's very not normal uh, by the, the status quo. And I spend a lot of time trying to fix that about myself, I think, you know, especially all the way through my 20s. And when I was finally given the opportunity to jump headfirst into entrepreneurship, to take that leap, I realized all of a sudden this was my spot to just be me and to get paid well to be myself with no filters and no censorship, that there was a place for all the pieces of me to just be me and to be celebrated and recognized and um, paid for the work that I did. And I could make a really big impact. So I kind of want to say that the leap sort of found me that it was almost inevitable. It was like I had been asking my whole life to figure out like, where is my place to shine and to belong? Um, And entrepreneurship really helped me realize it's wherever I create it to be. Like I can create my own space and my own dynamic um, to play and to really work and thrive in. So long story short, (laughs) I think it really just was the culmination of it just made total sense when I crossed paths with entrepreneurship. Wow. Uh, So did did you ever have any fear about any of this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. A lot, a lot, but you a sounded lot, like, I, cause I know you, I know you're really competent and you, <laughs> uh, and, I, and you're absolutely brilliant. I, I don't think I've ever met anyone who has a mind like yours, Sarah, you are Aww. amazing. You, Kathy. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you know, I've said this to you before. I will say it to anybody because you are incredible at what you do. And, and not only you're, you're you've got such uh two sides to you you're so 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 yeah organized and and detail and then on the yes. other side you're so creative <laughs> yes. I think that that's where the fear was for me the most was you know in my day job so I went from being an, in, an entrepreneur to an entrepreneur meaning I still I work for an entrepreneur Jennifer Kim who's also been on your amazing podcast and oh, show. My podcast yeah Yes. And uh, she has been a very dear friend and mentor of mine. And we've worked together for almost eight years now, I want to say. Um, wow. And in the beginning, you know, I knew that I wanted to go full time and be this entrepreneur who had more flexibility probably than if I had a corporate nine to five job, for sure. A hundred percent. So much more autonomy for me. But there was a lot of fear around, am I still going to be good enough? saying that I want to work with, for somebody, does that make me less than entrepreneurs who go out and go big and do it themselves? And there were so Mm -hmm. many voices, well-meaning voices that were telling me that I needed to be the star of the show and I should be an entrepreneur. And that was my fullest potential. And that I was shortchanging myself by taking that leap, even into the entrepreneurship part of it. And I was really scared. I was wondering did I make the wrong decision? Is, am I like shortchanging myself? Am I just not doing enough? Is this, is this wrong? Am I choosing a path that's too safe? And at the end of the day, the answer was no. The answer was no, because the question is not entrepreneur, entrepreneur, should I get a job? Should I have own my own business? It's not those questions. The question really is, do I believe in me And where it is that I'm supposed to be right now and where I feel I'll make the biggest impact as well as have the best quality of life. And it was really, really, really scary for me, Kathy, to be able to say I'm 100% in with this choice, even if it turns out to be that any of the doubters or well-meaning people, right, who are asking, why are you taking this risk? Um, Even if it turns out that they were right, can I still be at peace with that at the end of the day? And the answer was yes. And I realized that it doesn't have to work for anybody else. It just has to work for me and my values, as Jen Kemp teaches about being values driven, and my family and my career and my art and my creative flow. Um, So that was, I think, the biggest fear for me is not necessarily taking risks and juggling so many things because I actually thrive on that. I love it. I'm such a multi-passionate human. But it was just saying, 
if I just was like super okay with my decisions and I didn't listen to any of the other voices, that's scary almost, you know, especially growing up in a society where Absolutely. people are always telling women how we should be and how we shouldn't be more often than not. Right. And mm-hmm. so just going all in and trusting myself, I think that was the scariest part of all for sure. Yeah. And you know, Sarah, how few people actually do that. Actually, yes. number one, think, what do I want? And then number two, once you know what you want, really go for it. Yeah. And not care like about what society or anybody else for does. It. That part right there. That part right there. hundred percent. Yeah. And I think after- But you wouldn't have felt good if you didn't go for it. A hundred percent. And I, and it did, it wasn't like one day I just woke up and I decided that I did it. Like I'm talking about over a course of five years, I really spent time finding myself and choosing me just over and over and over again and continuing to say yes to the things that I felt were the right opportunities for me and saying no when I felt like they weren't. And I wasn't always a hundred percent accurate, but loving myself and being confident anyway, even when I wasn't a hundred percent accurate, like that's really what I had to learn and grow inside of me. Um, And I love it because that confidence now is expressed in all the areas of my life. It shows up when I'm a COO, it shows up when I'm writing my spoken word pieces. It shows up when I'm talking to my entrepreneur friends. It shows up when I'm talking to my poetry friends, when I'm with my kids. It's the same when I'm walking through an airport, catching a connecting flight. Like I just feel different inside of me. And I know it's because I took the leap and because I kept saying yes. And I didn't backpedal. Like I was like, I'm just going to see this all the way through. And I'm going to trust that it's going to shake out on the other side. You know, like that was kind of my mantra for almost five years, just repeating to myself over and over. Um, And people look now at at the life I have and they say, well, it's amazing. And I was like, yes, it is amazing. And so I don't know if they maybe think that it just happens or I'm such an inspiring person because this is me, but like, I actively had to choose to say yes over and over for five years. You know, that's the part that um, I'm glad you brought it up because I don't think too many people talk about that. Yeah, you were a five-year overnight success. 100%. As in, yeah, because that is what people see. They don't know the struggle, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I also know that you not only had to choose your career to make yourself happy, but you also had to choose where you lived. So can you talk a little bit about Mm -hmm. what it felt like to make the decision to move and move? Yes, 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 yes. So um, I was born and raised in Hawaii all of my life. I really never thought that I would leave. I thought, you know, um, we had, my husband and I had our four children there and um, there was just something that I knew it was time for us to look for different opportunities, not necessarily better. But in that process of saying the yes over and over and over again and saying the yes, one of the opportunities that came up was to move to the States. And I was already traveling um, quite often for Master Brand Institute, you know, and it made sense. It, I felt like it just makes sense to be closer. Um, honestly, I was getting tired of getting up at 4 a.m. for <laughs> the time zone difference, right? Because it's oh, so yeah. far behind, yeah, so six absolutely. hours behind ET. So 4 a.m. Hawaii time is like 10 o'clock in New York, which the whole day is basically gone for them. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. there was just so many things that were coming up. And I told my husband, I said, I think, I think I want to move. What what do you think about it? And he was like, yeah, he was more excited than I was. He was like all in from the moment that I brought it up. And I was surprised because he was also born and raised in Hawaii. And we have never really talked about doing anything other than what was a typical norm for, for being there. Right. And, um, it was just the right timing. And so it took a lot of faith, I think, and trust on both of our parts and on my kids' parts too, because they were already preteens by the time we, we moved up here a couple of years ago. Um, but it's huge for your kids at that age. Huge. It is really big. And I moved a lot as a child, like a lot. My parents were, Um, missionaries and they taught English in schools around the world. And so I traveled a lot at a young age. And so there was, again, you know, all of those voices in my mind, that's like, am I doing the wrong thing? And 
is this the state, is this the right choice for my children? And I think it's responsible to ask yourself these questions. I, I don't think it's like, you know, you have to as a parent. I really believe that. You really need to think these oh, things yeah. through. And I had to just be very careful though, that the answers that were coming to me were answers that my husband and I, that I really felt was true to us and our family and our goals together. And it wasn't informed by some kind of cultural or upbringing or atmosphere or anything else that it really was just me saying yes to me, not in an irresponsible way, but ultimately that it wasn't filtered through anybody else's biases. So um, we moved up to the States. We moved, in fact, um, to California and then from California to Las Vegas where we purchased a home because my kids wanted um, to be a little bit closer to the local community of Hawaiians. And I wanted that for them too. So uh, we moved to be a little bit closer to family and friends. And it's been amazing. We have, we love it here. We love it. And I want to go back for sure to Hawaii. I want to retire there for sure. For sure. I can't see myself. Oh, okay, um, cool. Isn't that amazing that you already again? know that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I think, Kathy, I think that's what it is. Sometimes people think that like they're big leaps are like an all or nothing. And once you do it, that's right. absolutely all of it. And there's no space for change. And then you have to go all the way till you, like we get so extra about it. We make the leaps so much bigger sometimes than they need to be. When, if we right. just trusted ourselves and we trusted our continual growth, it would be more like a step instead of running and trying to do a, a massive jump across the Grand Canyon. You know, sometimes we just psych ourselves out too much in our brains instead of just going, oh, ever this is this is the next yes, this is the next yes that aligns and and where we need to go. So, yeah. Oh, I love that. I want to go back to a phrase that you used that I I hadn't heard before, and you probably with your brilliant uh, creativity made it up. Multi passionate. What did you say? Was that what you said? multi-passionate human and I have to attribute that to Jen Cam actually because she was the one who told me she's like you are like the most you're the epitome of a multi-passionate human I was like oh I love that phrase I definitely am (laughs) I do too and you so are so let's talk about your other passion your spoken word passion how did you get into that and tell us about where you are with it today Yeah. So I have always loved writing and the creative arts growing up, um, painting, music. I just have loved all of it. And when I was a teenager, I stumbled into um, hip hop, which I grew up in a very conservative uh, religious background. Um, And that's how I was raised. It was just my upbringing. And so I stumbled upon this wonderful world of hip hop and um, rap. And I didn't, I didn't know what those things were, right? Just as a preaching coming into listening to the radio at a church camp, no less. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's I hilarious. <laughs> I know. And I was like, the level of self-expression that's in music as a whole has always spoken to me. Um, and so I started writing and I started thinking about poetry and rap and eventually the cross between that, which is spoken word, and just how much I could put myself into words and analogies and the things that I was seeing and feeling that were so much bigger than what my conversations allowed me to do. My circle of friends or my circle of influence, the ideas I had and the radicalness of how I wanted to express that was so different than the physical situations that I found myself in. And so I wrote a lot um, we saw Hamilton together, right, Kathy? You and I at, at our yeah. Place. Oh my gosh, that was it amazing. Was so good. It was so good. And there's a phrase in there where he talks about I wrote my way out, and that's really what I think has been my mantra as an artist. Everything that I was going through, um, all of the traumas in my life, all of the joys in my life, the struggles, the the culture, all of it, I put it down into words, into spoken word, and I thought it was just like a thing. I didn't think it was, you know, I said, okay, cool. I love it. I, I love it for me personally. And um, I was writing one day at one of these, one of the retreats with Jen Cam, the one that we go to Kathy. Um, and someone asked me there, fellow mastermind sister asked me, what you writing? I said, oh, it's just a piece I was inspired to write. And she goes, I want to hear it. I was like, yeah, sure. And I just kind of had my headphones on like I do. And I was just 
writing away. And in my mind, I was thinking, I'm just going to say, yeah, sure. To be polite. I'm not actually going <laughs> to share it with her, like, well, whatever she'll forget. And we went to dinner. We we're eating dinner. We finished dinner. And she goes, I want to hear the poem that you were writing. And I was like, are you sure? She's like, yeah. I said, okay, fine. So I pulled it out and I read it. And I think it was the first time that I had ever performed one of my spoken word pieces um, to a group of business counterparts. These were my, my colleagues and peers. And I finished the piece and I looked up and all of the participants there were crying. They just had tears coming out of their eyes. Um, and they looked at me and they were like, that was amazing. And Jen looked at me and she said that, you need to just do more of that. And I was like, I feel like I'm kind of just an average writer because again, remember all of those voices and the upbringing and all the, the crap that we're told, right? Is oh, right. just kind of average. And they're like, no, you're not. You need to write more. Um, and that really was the catalyst moment for me that sparked me diving even deeper into it. And, and recently for me, it's been a form of self-expression around one of my highest values, which is societal justice. And so to be able to talk about the reflections that I have around um, leadership, around equity, around um, what basic human rights are for minority groups, how we approach all of those things in society, what we believe about ourselves. There's so much of that that I've experienced in my upbringing and in my journey to now that I've really been putting shape around and, and using art as a form for, and I love it. I'm like obsessively in love with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. Um, I have had the honor of hearing several of your spoken word pieces and you uh, performed one at a virtual event that I put on and I am so honored. And every time I hear something you write, it moves me so deeply. Aww. One of the things, Sarah, that I'm amazed by with your writing is that it's not, it is a story and it's like every phrase I want to remember. I'm like, the phrase was amazing. Wait a minute, that's just another one that was amazing. Um, so one that really sticks out for me is when you said, um, it's not you that's broken, it's the mirror. Yes. Yeah. I love that. And that's just one of thousands of things that you yes. have said in your spoken word pieces that just really That's impacted part of me. why I love the art so much is it allows us to make these metaphors and similes and uh, correlations of so many times there's things that are stuck in our head that are just like literal words that we believe to be true but if you put a little bit of a different light on it a story a good metaphor a good um, example and you just think about it, you just sit with it a little bit more. I think there's so much that comes up of, oh, do we really believe that? And why, why do we believe that to be true? You know, um, one mm -hmm. thing that I was taught at a young age was to question everything because you're a leader and leaders question everything. You know, I will say my mom really instilled that in me. And so I do, I do often question everything. Like I always ask myself, who benefits from me believing that? And it's amazing mm. if you just asked yourself that question, how many threads you would pull and unravel to see, wait, is that really me? Or is that just another voice that I've attached to? Um, and so the name of my, my brand for my artist side is Speak Your Word, because I really believe that the more we can discover what our word is, like what's true to me, and we can speak that out loud, the more we create opportunities for us to take those leaps that are the right leaps for us to say yes to. Oh my gosh. You have so many words of wisdom you're sharing. You're <laughs> dropping all these gems today. I'm loving it. Thank you so much. So um, you also do, um, um, and I'm blanking, other form of creative media. Yes. What do you call so there's, that? There's actually one behind me on the wall. <gasps> So Ooh. I, yeah, I recently started taking, um, doing magazine type collages on canvas and I love it because it allows us to, I'm such a, I'm the type of person I was a terrible student in school because I have to do the thing to learn it. Otherwise I don't want to pay attention because I get bored super easy. So all of my report cards, Sarah's a nice, sweet girl. 
very smart. She talks too much. Always, every time. Me too. She fights with the boys. <laughs> <laughs> she gets into fights with the boys because they're always picking on my friends. So of course I'm going to get into fights. <laughs> and, you know, she could, she, if she focused a little more and applied herself, she could probably go farther. And I mm. realize now as an adult, there wasn't anything wrong with me per se, now that we have so much more understanding around how children learn or humans in general, right. how we learn. Um, I'm very six sensory. So the canvases are um, like just regular canvases you would paint on. And I use um, like a Mod Podge glue and I put magazine cutouts that I do to really bring this collage together. And I attach a QR code on the back so you can scan it and it'll take you to the digital version of the spoken word piece that's attached with it. So it's this full audio visual. Oh, that's so amazing. Um, experience that yeah. I love. The piece behind me, in fact, is um, the Hawaiian flag upside down on the Mount of Mauna Kea in um, honor of, we did a family visit uh, to Mauna Kea. I don't, uh, if you Google TMT and Mauna Kea, you'll see there was, it was a whole big global thing where, um, the Hawaiians are really trying to just protect land that's sacred. And everyone is having this discussion around, well, I mean, it's not really illegal. We can totally put all these telescopes up there. It's totally fine that we do construction and drill down into the water sources and the aquifers because this is for scientific innovation and we want to see the stars. Um, so it doesn't matter that it's sacred Hawaiian land. And so I did a piece called Sacredness is Not Up for Discussion because I really felt strongly, you know, being married to a Hawaiian myself and my kids are obviously part Hawaiian. It just, to me, it, it boggled my mind that there were people of non-Hawaiian descent who were trying to argue this point with an indigenous culture of how their sacredness is not really sacred. And I was like, I don't even understand how this is up for discussion, period. It just doesn't make sense to me. So I recorded a piece on Mauna Kea um, it's one of my most favorite pieces that I've done and I wanted to really anchor it. And so it's here in my office. It's a conversation starter. It's behind every Zoom call that I have with as I'm working, you know, um, but it's things like that where I really love making the art tangible because I think that there are causes and beliefs and things that are so deep to us on so many levels that are personal to us. For, for me, Hawaiians and Native Hawaiian rights are such um, it's such a strong topic for me, especially because I think about my kids and my husband and my family and all of these mm. things, right? Um, so for me, that that's a way that I anchor my word. Uh, and that's really the purpose of what I want my art to do is just to continue to help people, folks to anchor their own words in ways that are powerful and, and transformative and meaningful for them. Oh, that's, that is so powerful. So if somebody wants to um, purchase, you have, you, do you, I do. Um, yeah, can I you do. talk a little bit about I, that? Yeah, I've made a couple custom pieces, which is always really fun. And I've written a handful of custom spoken word pieces as well. Um, I love that exploratory process of just sitting with someone, talking through what they believe their word is, and then translating it into a custom spoken word piece that I've written. And then uh, I do the canvas too. So like I said, you can put it up and see your word at all times. Um, so if you want to reach out to me or contact me, you can go to www.speakyourword.com. That's the best way to get in touch with me. Um, and yeah, I do one a quarter of those custom pieces just because it is a very in-depth process. And I just love that. Um, and Kathy, as you know, earlier this year in 2021, Oh, I almost said 2022. See, my mind is jumping ahead already to next year. Earlier this year, 2021, I did um, a collaborative piece. It was like 22 canvases that were about four by four in size that made up a whole big piece um, for my mastermind of um, colleagues and sisters in business. And I wrote it and sent a piece out. So it's 22 pieces that won everywhere in the world, basically. And I have one. <laughs> it's really cool. And you got one. Yes. And I got one and it's awesome. And I love it so much because whenever I, wherever I turn it, it's like crazy 
or not, you know, crazy. And I'm like, did you do that on purpose? So that no matter which way I turned it, then I was like either crazy or brilliant. Crazy genius um, or genius crazy. Is crazy crazy right? genius. Like, yes. Yes. And yes, I do. Yes, yes, yes. I turn it. I haven't hung it anywhere. I literally have it setting on the shelf back here. I and I look at it and go, am I crazy or genius today? Oh, I think I'm genius today. <laughs> I love that. Sometimes it's a little bit of both. You know, all the... I have a spoken word piece in fact around mad scientists. Like think about all these people who are innovative and change the world. Someone was like, you're crazy. And they're like, mm, yeah, but it's going to be some good stuff that comes out on the other side. Like, you know, it's just, I think it's so important. I think it's so important. Yeah. Well, I don't know about you, but I know um, a lot of really smart people like you, thank goodness, because I love to hang out with smart people. And some of them are so on that fine line. You don't happen to be one of them, but they're so on that fine line between crazy and genius, right? Yes. And, and, you know, Kathy, I think that that's literally, it is for me. I'm so systemized and you give me any sort of business I can completely build out an entire system that runs it. You give me enough time and you give oh, me Oh, and I've business. seen you do a little bit of it. And it's amazing. <laughs> it, it, that is an art also. It is. You're, it is. Yes. It's totally. And that's why I say for me, it feels like genius, crazy, crazy genius. Because sometimes ideas come out in this very fluid, free-flowing spoken word poem that comes with like a collage and all of these bright, beautiful, clashing colors. That it's just like, what is this cacophony of? senses that's happening and on the other hand it can be super structured where I'm like no you literally this will tell you what to do every single day and you'll make a ton of money when you're done following the steps here right it's just it's these two dichotomies for me that it the cool thing about it is the more I going back to that big leap the more I learned over those five years to just keep saying yes to me and yes to me and yes to me and yes to those leaps the more that Space between the systems and the art started to get pulled closer and closer together. So now mm. I don't feel like a crazy person going, am I Sarah the artist or Sarah the COO? I feel like I'm just Sarah and it just depends what yeah. I'm creating today. And I think that that's where everyone who is in that middle line of crazy genius, that's all we're trying to look for, right? Is like, how mm -hmm. can I show up just as me? and be fully accepted and recognized and expressed. And where can we go with that? <laughs> mm, that's so powerful. And you do that every day. So um, if somebody wants your art, they can go to, um, say it again. www.speakyourword.com. And we will also have that link in the show notes. Now, what if they want you to actually speak a spoken word do you do that um I do for that a fee, as or well not... oh talk I about do that. that as well yes <laughs> so I have been a part of three or four conferences now in fact um where I have actually written custom spoken word pieces for the audience and there's just something really Kathy at the end of the day I love whether it's the COO hat or the artist hat I love the synergistic exchange of talking with someone and really getting to their heart, to their word, to their truth, and then building words around that. So I, I adore it. And mm. in a live event setting, it's even more fun because I get to play and do it for an audience. So it's not necessarily for the host of the event, but the host will tell me, these are the types of people at the retreat. These are the people, types of people coming into um, the audience and we'll build, I'll build a piece just kind of intuitively uh, around what I feel ties back to the theme of the event and what they need to hear and kind of where they're at in life. And I love it. It's so good. It's so powerful. Um, and, you know, people always say, I wish I could just, I'm going to just capture this in a video and just play it every single day. That's the most, that's the number one thing that I hear whenever I perform my piece. It is that good. <laughs> it is that powerful. I totally agree. I totally agree. It is that powerful. It's amazing. Do you want me so to share the piece that I wrote for your group? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Please. Okay, cool. Yeah. Give me a second to pull it up here. I don't have it like fully memorized off the top That would of be head, awesome. But... So in fact, I have this piece here that I um, wrote for your audience, Kathy, that I would love to share. Um, and it's called Today. Yes, please. Today. <laughs> Go for it. All right. 
they teach us that in order to get ahead, to get what we want in life, we have to look like everyone else. But the thing about living up to someone else's idea of who you should be, it's not easy. And if you're like me, you look back at your life and see that more often than not, you've lived it chasing after someone else's shadow. I won't deny it. Those who walk ahead of us lead fearlessly. They take giant steps and blaze a path to follow. They seem to get everything right, get everything we too want to have in life. And whether it's taught or learn, I'm not sure, but we've spent decades trying to catch up to them, longing for change, believing that in order to make a difference, we need to be like the industry giants, generational leaders, and great innovators of the world. That game of comparison stretches us like no other. And in our pursuit, we face some God awful times, trying our integrity and denying more of who we are inside to be more of who we were expected to be. We've gone that extra mile when our hearts told us to just go home, put in that overtime when we were worn out like a tire with no tread in desperate need of a break, embraced the political handshake that said yes when we thought that's the last thing in the world I agree with. And I've learned the hard way through compromises that left me with bruised knuckles and bloody knees that living in someone else's shadow is tricky, impossible, because just when you get to the point of lining yourself up with them, something shifts, a mood, a whim, politics, life, and all of a sudden, you're doing it wrong again. Nothing stings worse than the that's not how we do things here, speech, after you've been on your feet all day doing conformity gymnastics. It stings like rubbing alcohol poured over a fresh gash in the depths of your good intentions. And that pain, that pain shapes us. We learn from it down to our very core, how to become master contortionists, bending, moving, flexing to be the perfect person each shadow asks us to be. We begin to judge ourselves, not on our individual worth, but on our ability to stack up against everyone else's. We guilt ourselves into wanting things we previously hated and self-care to try to soothe the disappointment that we can't seem to shake. And what I hope you hear, what I hope you feel, what I hope this squeezes into your intuition is a pressure so great, a dissatisfaction so pure that you finally say out loud, I can't live like this anymore. Today is a day I take the leap and dare to do something different. Today is a day I see that I am worth more than trying to be a shadow of someone else. I am worth being my whole self. Today is a day I put down a lifetime of sadness and grievances collected in my bag of lost hopes and dreams. I let that melt from my mind and untie it from my expectations of tomorrow. Today is the day I take the metal shields I have used like armor to guard myself and transform them into ancient walls of stone, wise, living, breathing, draped in vines and lilac flowers so I can see beauty and protection where I once saw fear. Today is a day I stand fast, alert, ready to do the work that will propel me into the greatness I already embody. Because listen to me, you do not need someone to motivate, inspire, rally, push you to the next level. Because I'm saying that today is a day you open your eyes and remember, you are the motivation, the inspiration, the rallying cry that pushes our industries, generation, and world leaders to the next level. And that, that my friend, is exactly who and what we need more of from you today. Wow. <laughs> Every word is just amazing. Every phrase. I love that so much. And I think that's the third one that I've gotten to hear from you. Um, and every one of them is so unique and so moving. Thank you so much for sharing that. What a perfect close to a wonderful podcast interview today. Thank you I so much, so much, Sarah Pai. Thank you for having me, <laughs> Kathy. <laughs> well, if I have anything to do with that, I'll be having you back sooner I'd rather to. than later. Okay. Thank you so much. And thanks everybody for listening. Bye. 
Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There, you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share her feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm-hmm.